Matthew 18, 53 says, unless you turn and become like a little child, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. It reminds me of a story the other day where my daughter came into my office and interrupted my work, which I'm okay with. She had a broken toy of her brother's in her hands. She said, Daddy, Satan whispered in my thoughts, and I listened to him, and I broke Mason's toy uh, because I wanted to. And she said, I'm so sorry, Daddy. Can you please forgive me? And I wasn't even a little bit mad. I was tickled. I was overwhelmed with love for my daughter because she did not hide from me. She didn't run and try to hide what she did. Her first reaction was to come straight to me and to tell me what she had done and what she struggled with. And so I capitalized on the moment. I said, honey, I struggle all the time and I hear Satan in my thoughts and sometimes I listen to him, but I am so proud of you for coming clean immediately. I'm so proud of you for recognizing that you did something wrong and then confessing it to me and asking for forgiveness. And I fixed the little toy. I just had to pop it back into place. And she goes out and apologizes to her brother and they make up. But you guys, that is the type of repentance that we need. To have faith like little children would mean that our first reaction when we mess up is to go straight to the Father, to run into his arms and to confess our sin, to, to tell him what we did wrong, to know that he's a loving daddy, that he's not looking to just pull out his belt and spank us, but he's wanting for us to not hide from him, but to run into his arms. Listen to Romans 2, 4, it says, Or do you despise the riches of his kindness, his restraint, and his patience, not recognizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? I want you to meditate on that this week. That's your challenge. Romans 2, verse 4 Think about his kindness and his love, how that directs us to run into his arms, just like my daughter did. Last story I'll leave you with is from one of my really good friends, Nathan Kemble. He said that he was really struggling with something he had done, and he felt guilty and ashamed, and he was driving in his car, crying out to God, and um, God just made it really, really clear to him that his love is unconditional, that his grace is unconditional. And that our motivation for repenting should be that we love our daddy. And we should have joy in repenting to him, knowing that we're no longer hiding, but that we're ultimately loved and forgiven, period. There's no conditions attached to it. It's that we would just seek the Lord and be willing to lay it down at his feet anytime we mess up. That he's already paid for everything we've done with the blood of Jesus and proved it by coming out of the grave. And so that that would be our encouragement, knowing that our daddy's patient, that he's kind, and he's trying to lead us to do exactly what my daughter did, to not hide, but to admit when we mess up. And that our first reaction would be, all right, I got to go tell daddy, <laughs> but I'm going to do it with joy, knowing that I'm already forgiven and that he'll be proud of me, and that he loves me, and he's going to be pleased with the fact that I'm confessing these things to him, rather than the alternative, which is beating ourselves up and thinking that the cross plus us beating ourselves up means that we'll get right with the Lord. That's not true love. That's not his love.